Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. This video contains an informative part where we explain the Iraq war and the known cause of it. We will also talk about another reason, not so often mentioned, of why US attacked Iraq. Before we start, don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. The Iraq War, a conflict which officially lasted about 8 years between 2003 and 2011. The situation and the war itself is a complicated topic and to understand it, we have to go back to the beginning when Saddam Hussein took power in Iraq in 1979. He controlled the country and immediately showed the Iraqi people which kind of strict and cruel leader he really was. In 1980, when Saddam had been in power for less than a year, he decided to attack Iran. Saddam was scared of the fact that the recent Shia revolution might spread into Iraq as well. He was also sure that the newly formed Islamic government of Iran were weak and that they wouldn't be any match against Iraq. Saddam felt secure of an easy victory, not at least when he had the whole West world behind his back. The war with Iran became much harder and longer than Saddam expected, and after 8 years of war and over a million people dead, Iraq was under tough economic pressure. Saddam needed money. In 1990, Iraq accused the US ally Kuwait for stealing oil and one year later Iraq invaded a small country which didn't stand a chance against Iraq. However, Iraq didn't play by US plans anymore. The attack of a US ally wasn't what US expected or wanted and therefore US started an operation to destroy the regime of Saddam. The new coalition of the West against Saddam were effective and it didn't take long before Iraqi troops had to leave Kuwait. However, the coalition didn't stop there. Kurds and Shias got support from the West in order to topple Saddam Hussein and the 1991 Iraqi uprising started. We have a specific video where we explain further about the 1991 Iraqi uprising, so be sure to check that out. Link will be provided in the description box below. In the last minute, US decided to stop the bombings of Baghdad and give Saddam a second chance. However, no fly zones were implemented over Shia and Kurdish areas, which for a while gave these people opportunity to strengthen themselves. In the year 2000, George W. Bush was elected as the new President of the United States. Just a year later, the 9-11 occurred something that would change history forever. USA was under attack by Islamic terrorists. Bush didn't see any other choice rather than declaring war against the terrorists. So the question now was, where could he find them? The terrorists responsible for the attack were from Al-Qaeda, who had their main base around either Afghanistan or Pakistan. The US therefore attacked Afghanistan to get their revenge for 9-11. After the attack against Afghanistan, Bush still felt that the terrorist threat still existed. For sure, they were not defeated yet. Which move would Bush take as the next move towards beating the terrorists? Well, looking at Iraq during Saddam Hussein's rule, there is one thing that Iraq stands out for, comparing to the rest of the Middle East. During Saddam Hussein's rule, there were zero, not even one, but zero terrorist attacks made against Iraq. How is it that Iraq have been free from terrorist attacks during Saddam's reign? Sources like the Weekly Standard, Council on Foreign Relations and the American government claim that Saddam Hussein regularly paid Al-Qaeda to not perform their political terrorism in Iraq. 
Further on, the American government claimed that the Iraqi government between 1992 and 2003 were involved in several meetings conspiring to launch terrorist attacks against the US. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, Saddam Hussein also did provide bases, training camps and other support to terrorist organization to fight the government in both Turkey and Iran. An active support towards Palestinian groups were also provided by Saddam Hussein. The same source claims that Iraq has under Saddam Hussein been a safe heaven for terrorists where names as Abu Nidal, Abu Abbas and Abdul Rahman Yassin were free to live. The last one mentioned were actually directly responsible to the World Trade Center bombings in 1993. The following ties between Iraq and Al-Qaeda was presented by CIA Director George Tanet in 2002. Senior level contacts between Iraq and Al-Qaeda which stretches back a decade. Iraq and Al-Qaeda have discussed and agreed of safe heavens and non-aggressions towards each other. Iraq has provided training to Al-Qaeda members in chemical weapons and conventional explosives. Al-Qaeda leaders have tried to cultivate contacts in Iraq who could help them acquire weapons of mass destruction. Some of Al-Qaeda's members who fled Afghanistan took refuge in Baghdad and other places in Iraq. In October 2002, US found out that the highly wanted terrorist and the future founder of the Islamic State, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, were receiving medical treatment in Baghdad. There is a lot of more allegation of links between Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein, but the perhaps biggest proof would be the question, why was Iraq free of terrorist attacks during the whole reign of Saddam Hussein, but suddenly became a center of terrorism as soon as Saddam was toppled? Well, obviously, since Al-Qaeda didn't get their political and economic support anymore and therefore didn't see any other reason than starting with the political terrorism again. What happened now was that Bush gave Saddam and his son 48 hours to leave Iraq. The family refused and an invasion started against Iraq which toppled the regime of Saddam Hussein. Within time, Saddam Hussein was found in a hole in his hometown of Tikrit. His two sons had a few months earlier been killed by American troops in Mosul. About 9,000 Iraqi soldiers loyal to Saddam Hussein were killed in the war while the coalition lost around 150. The next year, the war made it into a new phase as extremist groups joined the conflict. On one side we had Shia extremists and on the other side we had Sunni extremists, both fighting in hope of gaining power in Iraq. Many high-ranking people from Saddam's regime joined the Sunni extremists, not at least the Islamic State. Another proof that these groups had a connection with the regime of Saddam. The Battle of Fallujah would be the bloodiest one, where over 3,000 died in a single event. In 2005, the first election in the so-called New Iraq were held and the year after that many events occurred, changing the course of the country forever. For example, the leader of Al-Qaeda in Iraq, the pre-group of the Islamic State, Sarqawi, was killed in an American airstrike. Also, the former dictator Saddam Hussein were hanged in Iraq and Nuri al-Maliki, the then Prime Minister of Iraq, conducted a political witch hunt which persecuted the Sunni minority of Iraq, sparking big demonstration and eventually violence among the Sunni people in the country. In 2009, Barack Obama was elected President of the United States. During the election, he promised a US withdrawal from Iraq and this happened in 2011. Totally, about 60,000 people died in the Iraq war and eventually this led to another conflict including the Islamic State and you can already check out our video about the Islamic State in order to get to know this conflict better. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like and share this video.
also comment down below what you want us to make for the next video.